One of the main topics in any algebra class is solving equations. Um, what we're going to be going over today is how to solve um, some of our most basic equations. Let's suppose that we have a problem like this. If I have x plus 5 is equal to 12, I have um, I have a one-step equation that I can work on. Now, what is the goal when I have an equation? Any time that you have an equation, your goal is to get the variable alone. Well, if we want to get the variable alone, we have to move anything that is on the same side of the equal sign as the x. Right now, on the same side of the x is this plus 5. In order to get the variable alone and move anything else, what we do is we are going to undo the operation that's there. And we're going to use the opposite operation. Here I'm adding something. The opposite operation of addition is subtraction. So here where I'm adding 5, if I want to get the x alone, I can subtract 5. The thing with an equation is, if I subtract 5 here, it's not equal anymore. So to keep things balanced, anything I do to one side of an equation, I also have to do to the other side of the equation. All right. So here, by adding 5 and then subtracting 5, these undo each other and leave me just with the x alone on one side of the equation. On the other side of the equation, I have 12 minus 5, which gives me 7. And that's my solution. Uh, the nice thing about equations is any time that you have a final answer, you can always plug it back into the original equation, um, and it should be true. So for example here, if x is 7, and I put it back in here, 7 plus 5 is equal to 12, and that works great. Now keep in mind as we're solving equations, uh, let's suppose that I have x plus 6 is equal to negative 3. So as we're dealing with these equations, we might still have to deal with our positive and negative rules. Um, but we just bring those back to mind. I want to get the x by itself. Right now the 6 is being added. So to get rid of it or undo the 6 that's being added, I'm going to have to subtract 6. And I do that from each side. Here, the plus, and, plus 6 minus 6 undoes each other and leaves me just with the x. And on the other side, I have to do negative 3 minus 6, or negative 3 plus negative 6, if you want to think of it that way. And I should get negative 9. Again, we can always double check. Negative 9 plus 6 is equal to negative 3. And I found a good solution to my equation. Um, now, what happens if we have something like x minus 7 is equal to 11? This time, my goal is still to get the variable alone. I have the x. 7 is being subtracted. So to get rid of the 7 that's being subtracted, I'm going to add 7 to each side. Subtracting 7 and adding 7 undo each other. Leave me just with the x behind. And 11 plus 7 is equal to 18. A few other things just to keep in mind. It doesn't matter which side of the equation your x variable is. The goal is always to get the x variable alone. So in this case, if I'm looking at the x, what's causing me trouble is the fact that the 2 is being subtracted from it. So when I go to decide what am I going to do in this instance to get rid of a minus 2, I'm going to have to add 2 to both sides. The minus 2 and the plus 2 get me 0, so that's out of the way. The x is by itself. And on the other side, I have negative 13 plus 2, which gives me a negative 11 as a solution. So it doesn't really matter which side the variable is on. What we're always worried about is getting the variable alone by undoing anything that's going on on the same side of the equation as it. In terms of this addition and subtraction set of rules, let's suppose that I have this equation. 
This is one that a lot of people get confused on because I have my x and I am adding a negative 18 to it. So to get rid of adding a negative 18, I have to subtract a negative 18 from each side. Now, if you remember, if we're subtracting, we can change it to an addition and change the opposite sign. So technically, to get this rid of this negative 18 that's being added to the x, I'm going to add 18. So I have a negative 18 and a positive 18. That drops out, and I'm left with x alone. And then I can do the addition on the other side of the equation to come up with my solution. So just be aware that even that if we're subtracting a negative, it's the same thing as adding as we get rid of that from both sides. Okay, so these are some examples here where we all had a bunch of different equations that had addition or subtraction, and we would get rid of whatever is on the same side of the x by doing the opposite of whatever was there. We also have opposite operations of multiplication and division. If we have, as an example, this equation, 3x equals 15, remember if we have a number and a variable next to each other, it means that they're being multiplied. So if I want to get the x by itself, I have to get rid of multiplying by 3, and to do that, I can divide by 3. Multiplying by 3 and dividing by 3 undo each other, and I'm left with just a single x. And on the other side, I can do 15 divided by 3, which is 5. Same idea. I can plug the 5 back in. 3 times 5 is 15. And my equation solution works out. I know on some of these problems that you're exact, you are aware, just looking at the problem, what number would work in that situation. What we're doing here is we're establishing a process and a pattern. Um, here we're dealing with one-step equations, but we're going to be building to equations where there's lots and lots of steps and we need a methodical method to go through each of these. So please, uh, you're not going to get credit for your homework if you just write an answer to these equations. I'm interested in the process. What did you start with? What did you do to each side of the equation? And what is your answer? If I don't have all three of those parts, then you won't be getting credit for the assignment or, or for the homework problems or for those problems on the test. We're looking for developing a strategy for solving equations of all types that we can build on for later. Okay, let's look at another example here. Let's suppose that we have negative 5x equals, um, let's say, 120. Okay, so in this case, I have the x, so I want to get rid of whatever is with the x. In this case, I have a negative 5 that's being multiplied, so when I divide, I need to make sure I divide by the negative 5 to make it go away. One way you can think of this, if we have a negative 5 on top, we need a negative 5 on the bottom to divide out. Also, a negative divided by a negative makes a positive and leaves me just with good old plain x. So be really careful with the signs when you're multiplying and dividing. You've got to carry that sign through when you're doing the opposite operation. At this point, then, we have a positive divided by a negative, which gives me a negative solution. And 120 divided by 5, why did I pick something hard here, is 24. So x is equal to negative 24. And again, you can use your calculator to do the division if you need to. All right. Um, let's consider a problem that looks like this. Let's suppose that we have um, 11 equals x divided by 3. Okay. In this case, notice that, again, I'm using this fraction symbol as my division um, bar, and that's just another way that we can write things. This is really common to see things written this way when we're dealing with equations. In this problem, my x, to get it alone, it's being divided by 3. So to get rid of it, I'm going to need to times by 3 on both sides. Dividing by 3 and timesing by 3 undoes itself and leaves me just with my x on the right side. On the left side, I have 3 times 11, which is 33. And I have a solution there. All right, let's look at this one. In this case, I have an x. 
What's being multiplied by it, however, is negative 2 thirds. Well, to get rid of multiplying by negative 2 thirds, I'm going to need to divide both sides by negative 2 thirds. Okay. Timesing by negative 2 thirds and dividing by negative 2 thirds undoes itself and leaves me just with x. But if I do 5 divided by 2 thirds, remember to divide fractions, we need to change the fraction division to multiplication and flip the second fraction over. So instead of 5 divided by 2 thirds, I'm going to do 5 times 3 over 2 instead. Okay, now to multiply fractions, it probably is helpful to think of that as 5 over 1. So I can multiply across the top and multiply across the bottom. 5 times 3 is 15 on top, 2 on the bottom. It's fine to leave your answer as improper fraction like this. Uh, just make sure it's simplified. In this case, there's nothing that would go into both 15 and 2. So we can call that our solution right there.